Gang, gang. Hi, YouTube. Um, all right, so now, salutations and shit, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Travel and Shit, your new favorite travel podcast, where we have more of a discussion about the nuance of travel and how it has affected us and our um, lives back home. Uh, I'm your host, D. Carey. And I just want to give you a heads up. The first little ditty of the commercial is um, if you are in the market for booking a trip, whether or not it be your first solo trip or you have friends that are booking trips, wherever you are in the game, um, I've got a course, solo travel planning course that is, that will absolutely give you the steps that I use to book all of my trips. Um, I've done maybe 20 Five twenty-two countries or so at this point, um, and I'd say more, uh, maybe 20, 20 or twenty-two of them have been solo. I've only been to uh, two countries with someone else. So that being said, I kind of have a handle on uh, booking solo trips in a group world. So if you or if you know someone that is in the space to book a trip and needs a little bit of help, head over to travelandshippodcast.com and uh, go to the shop tab. And I've got a course. It's free. Just head over and um, sign up for that. It's, it's a group of videos and there is a workbook that is um, an accompaniment to the course. This way you have um, more, uh, what do you call it? Like outlines. I have charts and graphs and uh, PDFs that you can fill in so that you can um, book your trip. So there's that. Um, also sign up for my mailing list. This way you can stay um, abreast of all the new courses that are coming out because I absolutely have some content for people that actually are um, not new to travel. So it's not just new travelers, there's also content coming for people that have um, really been in the mix of the travel world. So that too can be found at travelandshippodcast.com. It's all there, all the things. And uh, I, to, you know, I can't really seem to keep it under three minutes. That was two minutes and 24 seconds, the intro. I feel like that was about the length of the intro, the last episode. But you know, the kid is getting better. So um, welcome back to all of y'all that have been here before and welcome to all of you guys that are new. So um, this week I have one of my favorite guests to have again, um, my baby Lo. Hi Lo. Hi so, everyone. Um, uh, this week I really wanted a more um, relaxed um, episode um, Lo always bails me out when I need like another voice to um, amplify just the shit that's on my mind. And we were talking about COVID and travel. So we're all pretty aware that COVID's going to be here for a while. Um, none of us had any idea that it was going to last this long. Um, but here we are. Um, initially, or happened when it happened, or happened right. when it happened. Is we didn't see it coming. You know what I mean? Like we was all minding our businesses, and then uh, businesses. We was all minding our business, and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, surprise! Like global pandemic. So I was. We were just talking beforehand, and it was just like, okay, let's just let's like start recording because all these conversations yeah. that we're having can absolutely just go, um, are absolutely in line. So I haven't traveled during the pandemic, but low has. And so before we jump into that conversation, I think it just makes a little bit of sense for us both to kind of lay out where we stand in terms of our common practices in regular life. And then it kind of makes, um, more sense, if you will, when we talk about why we've traveled, why we haven't traveled, where we've gone, that it'll, you know, make a little bit more sense listening to it. So I was just telling Lo that, because we were talking about a, a mutual friend that we have that's going to Jamaica next month. And I was saying that I was this close to going to Tulum with one of my homegirls, but my job basically has me uh, restricted. Like I, I have to fill in a, um, a sheet that I 
and basically saying, I haven't tried, I haven't left the country or been to any of the restricted states that New York has, um, you know, in place. So that being said, I am, I was saying to her, like, I could absolutely just lie about it. And she was just like, but that's not your character. That's not your character, like, yeah. It feels nice that even my friends know that. Um, but yeah, I just, I, it, it doesn't feel right to me, especially considering that, because I would absolutely want that same energy put in effect for me. Like, yeah. I wouldn't want my coworkers to up and do whatever the fuck that they wanted to do just because they had the ability to, because when you come back in that building, I'm expecting that all of the shit and all the things that are put into place to keep us all safe and healthy, everybody's abiding by that just so that, because at the end of the day, when I'm in like our locker room and I'm eating my lunch, like we can't, how am I eat my lunch with a mask on? That's just <laughs> not how that works, yeah. you know? Okay, so, so. For, so I want to first say that you're one of my favorite people in the world. <laughs> I love my baby. Dana Trojan. Then I want to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Lola from New York City. <laughs> Let me just introduce myself first. Everyone knows who I am. Lola um, from New York City. And um, you know, everyone has different. The, the everyone has different views and different ways they manage COVID, mm -hmm. which is understandable because everyone has you know, different work situations. Some people are working from home. Some people um, have to go into the building. Some people um, are not working. Um, so everyone has different um, situations and as well, different ways of how they handle COVID. You know, some people are like, okay, not really bothered. Some people already had right. COVID. So they may have the antibodies. Some people um, are really afraid of it. Um, so... I feel like everyone just has a different way, yeah. but um, I don't, well, yeah, you don't take the train or, but like New York City is packed all over again. So I feel like I don't even know how kind of we're jumping into this, but I don't even know where I got COVID. I don't know if it was on the train. I don't know if it was when I went to go get my nails done. Mm -hmm. Like you just don't know when you, you right. get it, and you try to trace back, and it's like yo, I don't even know how I got it. I'm, I'm gonna, we just don't know. But um, I know. So yes, yeah. you you ended up you did get COVID. I did get COVID, but let's speak about I want to say first about the traveling. Um, for New Yorkers, you know we were hit the hardest with COVID. One of the states that was hit the hardest in the whole world. <laughs> and as travelers, or as travel junkies, or as travelers, um, this was really hard for me because, you know, I love to travel, and it's just kind of like my escape of you know from new york and i just love to travel so this was just like oh you know it's a pandemic you can't travel we don't know when you're going to travel i was like ah, this is a no but um i think that there's a couple of countries that are open to americans i know americans were banded on a lot of lists around the world mm -hmm. when the borders are now open to us yeah, I think they reopened uh, to extra com uh, countries. Uh, some countries that were open have shut back down. And see, that's what my issue with travel is, is that, one, there's nothing united about the states right now. There is no federal, uh, there are no federal regulations for COVID prevention or anything going on. So just because my state, ha well, our state, like just because New York has put, certain uh, precautions in place yeah. to kind of reduce transmission doesn't mean that Alabama, Kentucky, California, and all of these other locations have um, done the same things. So my issue is um, states like, say, let's just say Florida, because Florida seems to be like the shit show of the, the country. Um, um the worry that is in my mind is that i would end up getting it in the airport or end up uh with uh at a destination with people from a state that they weren't doing anything to um you know protect everybody 
And that's what my concern is. You know what I mean? Because my thing is, I can take my test. I come back negative. I get on the plane. I do all the precautions that I want to do. I get there. I um, social distance. I do everything that I can. I luck out so that I get to the airport and I'm not even around people that often. But then when I get to the space that I want to stay, like if I get to the resort or whatever, then um, it sounded much better. Thank you. If I get to the resort, then it's like, okay, so who's to say that somebody from Miami isn't staying on the resort as well. And because you would think that I am in a location or a destination that I had to take a test to get to, they took another test when I got there. It's just like my, in my mind, there are too many people in my life that are immunocompromised that I am around that I don't want to put at risk. Also yeah. because and I just don't, feel, I personally take um, responsibility for my actions in terms of trying to keep everybody else safe. I feel like if more people were to be really cognizant and aware um, of the things that they do and how their moves put other people at risk, then a lot of this wouldn't be as um, intense as it is. It was supposed to be handled in the beginning and some people are asymptomatic. They don't even know that. that and okay, so let's just jump into- What was your experience like? How was, where did you trip. go? And so, what did you have to go through to leave the country? Yeah, I went to Mexico. What part did I, you go to? I went to Cancun. Okay. Went when, to did, Cancun. when did you go? I went July. Okay. I went in July. Um, ending in July. Um, I want to say I went to the resort. And, well, let's jump into it from even um, how the trip came about. So my friend works in the airline, which we spoke about before, and there was um, the airline has been hit, of course, drastically, mm -hmm. and a lot of the employees off or like furloughing them. And he was, and my friend was like, "Yo, like we might, you know, I might get furloughed. I don't know what's gonna happen." So I was just like, "I." Right. So it was like, "Yo, if you want to travel, like get your travel on, do whatever you want." Cool. So I was like, dang, man, is this a sign? Like, maybe it's a sign I need to get out of here. I was just like, oh, at first I wasn't, I didn't even want to like, uh, but then I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go, let's just go. Um, and traveling was like a dreamer's traveling experience because the airport, JFK was empty, that JFK is never empty. Mm -hmm. um, you had to, I, I had done the COVID test before because I was gonna go to Jamaica. I was okay. like, okay makeup and then I said I'm going to Mexico Mexico you don't need any um COVID exam you could just walk on in and that's what worries me is yeah. that I'm out here having a good time with a bunch of people that don't know that they have COVID because I don't feel like a lot of people do it yeah. intentionally like I don't feel like people are being malicious about it you have options as a traveler so let me just tell you the options okay. you have. so the airplane it was sort of empty it was a little bit crowded but it was definitely not like packed as we usually are and how hard it usually is in New York wasn't packed at all. Um, what, what airline did you fly? Like, were they keeping that middle aisle empty at yeah. that point? They were. We, we flew. Um, am I allowed to say the airline? Just because I don't want to get any. Uh, yeah, so don't right, just well, say it then. Yeah, it was. I don't want to It was say. a major airline, though, right? Yeah. Like, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a major airline. And um, we, booked the, we booked the resort. We booked. Um, I think the Palladium, the mm -hmm. Palladium or the TRS, um, uh, I don't know, Palladium in Cancun. And so now I know COVID is like the big thing, but right now it's like a traveler's dream mm -hmm. because all the luxury travel is like 50% off, 70% off. So you're getting like to be in these exotic suites that, you know, we can really afford and mm -hmm. get to Damn. Oh, I know. Now it's budget. <laughs> it it Five better. star is at like a two, I three know. star price. So it's just like, are you willing to, it, again, it just depends. Like, are you willing to take the risk or are you not? But I was willing to take that risk. And speaking of risk, I think that risk is something that needs to be kind of like fairly assessed for everybody differently. Like, yeah, because you, it, dep it depends on your immune system too. Are you a healthy person? Do you have underlying health conditions? But not um, even just that though. Like who else are you around? Like if it's just you, if you oh, live alone right, so and you jump. don't have any oh, yeah, kids yeah, yeah, or anything yeah, yeah. like that, then it's if like, all right, you might you be able to take that risk. Yeah. I spend yeah. a lot of time with my grandmother and she's 
old like grandma shit, shit. but you like you just would have to stay away too you would just have to stay awake for, away from grandma for two weeks or three weeks right. and then after when you test negative because i went and got tested is mm-hmm. i'm negative but i do have the antibodies then you're good to go and i'm actually so happy that i did have and i have the antibodies to, t- to get this shit out of the way way because i'm like i can't be living my life in fear but now the catch is who's there's no guarantee that you can't get it again yeah yeah after three months or two but at least i have like you know like at least my life can continue like i can't you know I was well, just like, uh, can, and that's another that's, misconception i think it's because i think that your life can't always continue it's how you do it it's like you can do all the same stuff that you've been doing just wear a mask right but even with the mask that we still are breathing all the same air you could probably still get it there's people on the train that don't wear masks. people next to you that mm-hmm. don't wear masks. York, like how can you control that and i didn't yeah. catch covid from traveling i caught it somewhere else if, if doing the map is right okay but let let me jump into it um it was a traveler's dream so i had a room that had the home st- um my own swimmer pool um which was great because i didn't have to socialize with anyone if i didn't want to i definitely brought my light my life saw in my suitcase and um life sawed everything down before i entered had my hand sanitizer but the resort was taking so many um measures to make sure that everyone was safe it was wow like did they test you in mexico when you landed no they they don't have a test in mexico you could just go in okay get to the resort like all the workers had the shield and a mask Mm -hmm. hand sanitizer as you get in um yeah people were social distancing um but they were or they weren't yeah, they were. They were. People were social distancing. But you don't have to interact with anyone because you can choose the room that has a swimmer bar, that had the swimmer pool, and you don't have to interact. So once you're in your room, you got your pool, you got your music, food for 24 hours. Wait, so you- there's, what do you mean you don't have to interact? I understand like um, a, a check-in, like, you know, you do it on the phone. Like, okay, I'm here. This is the room. Check-in. you the social distance and check in but after you check in and they are you check in at the desk you still you check in at the desk still yeah mm-hmm. you know with information and just you have they have to take your passport but out but when you check in you have the choice to be in your room and you don't have to come out mm-hmm. especially you if you to. have your own pool but i mean yeah, i personally would never just stay in the room i would want to go yeah, to I, the I, I ended up going to the main but um to the main pool or like once, but I was still like had my distance, but it was okay, it was good. Um But what were you saying were, about they were constantly cleaning the hotel like like all the time, like all the time they were cleaning, sanitizing. So, question. Two two questions. What, what about room uh not room service? Well, yes, room service, but did the like uh cleaning staff clean your room every day or is that Yeah, if you want to they do and if you don't want to no. Okay, so that's an option. Um, so then two is when you say the bar, like the swim up bar, was the swim up bar an option for, like you were able to you access can order, that from your room? Um, the, um, the room I had, we had a butler. It came with a butler and we have a butler. And then when you're in your swimmer pool, they come by and say, hey, do you want drinks? Do you want drinks? And they bring it to you. Okay. Okay. So yeah, they bring it or they put it down like on the pool stand they could put it down there and then you go get it okay what about uh room service are you still able to order room service or is service 24 hours now what about had had the and they also had the restaurants open if you wanted to dine in Mm -hmm. that was or if you didn't that's okay too that was my next question where um did they have like in long island you can dine indoors but they have it set up so like every other table is able to be used or like there's a a flow to it so that you're still like six feet away well more than six feet i would say but you're like did that appear to be the case at that resort in particular like where the um the inside dining or were y'all just right on top of each other we ended up going to a steakhouse and that you see that you could really play with it at your disposal um again oh and they can only take i think 30 percent capacity so the okay. resort wasn't that packed at all. It wasn't a full capacity. 30 capacity or 35, so it's like fairly empty. Um, they did do the social distance in the restaurants, like, you know, okay. people are spread it away. But as well, I remember I went to a steakhouse. I was like, okay, let's go to the steakhouse. Mm-hmm. It was the food was amazing in Mexico. Um, and I, at the time that I went, like, we, 
I chose to go like right when it opened or at six or seven, no one was there. It was empty. Okay. So it was even better because I had a whole, you know, restaurant to myself. How really about, good. um, oh, and that specific restaurant had like an outside part too that you could eat outside. Okay. How yeah. about, um, like, did you do any activities like off the resort or did you no, stay in the, the whole time? No, I didn't. That was, um, available. But I didn't. I just stayed in, you know, just to be safe. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Well, not that it makes sense. Like if you don't like, cause I, I, that's one thing that I feel like that's another reason why I don't really want to go anywhere because I don't think I would be content just staying at the resort. Oh my God. You know, even just the view, like going to the beach, you know, just having like that little two. Okay. So there was a beach. Yeah. We had a beach in the back. Okay, so, and I guess it was a beach reserved just for people at yeah, the resort. Yeah, I, I think we'll tell, yeah, uh, yeah, at the resort. We'll okay, tell. see, that would be, I could do two, three days of that. Outside of that, like, I would prefer, I would need to do something, because I feel like that's where. Yeah, you want to get out, yeah. Travel yeah. me and home me. All right, but that's Very much then, so different. Then that's, I, then, then that's how you would feel comfortable, because maybe yeah. someone wouldn't feel that much comfortable. Like, listen, I don't want to risk it. I'd rather just stay here. Mm-hmm. Then, then, then you have that option. But if you want to go out and venture out and do something, then you have that option as well. So it just what, depends on how you want it. What type of things do, did you see that they had available t- for you to do um, they off the resort? They could take you to the, um, the Maya ruins. I, I, mm-hmm. or the, yeah, the Maya ruins. They can take you. Um, I think they had, like, you know, different, like, water activity, like the kayaking. There was, like, another part of the island that they w- were able to take you to. I don't know if that's the same island your friend was planning to go to, but they have, like, another side of the island that you can go to. So, and Mexico is so cheap right? for Americans. So we're really getting a bang for our buck. Yeah, I would absolutely have to get off the resort. Like, I don't think, have I ever stayed? Yeah, I stayed at a resort when I was in Thailand and I stayed at a resort in Bermuda. The resort in Bermuda was popping. Yeah. Like we had that private beach. There were like two or three pools, I want to say. Um, but I don't like pools. Like, I only like the pool if it's, like, my pool. Like, if I can't get in the pool naked, like, I don't really want to, like, it has no appeal to me. I, I don't, it, I don't like the idea of chlorine. I feel like that's gross. I would prefer the beach, absolutely, but that's my personal preference. Like, if I have just my own pool where I could just jump in from my room, that's a different story. I'm getting in that pool. But, oh my God, it was a, pools, I don't like. My pool was just, it was amazing, and they had, like, a little, like, um, chair swing and you just mm-hmm. swing oh i it remember was, seeing it i didn't know it was a private pool though it just looks so big like i didn't expect it to be like just your pool because you because because of covid you're really getting this luxury treatment for the low mm-hmm. so if you I, do I, I, like honestly i was like i'm ready to move here just send everybody i work from my room <laughs> yeah shout out to denise she is one of our homegirls is actually moving to um mexico in a couple of weeks and I would absolutely love to uh be remote at this point um I just don't have a remote job like I have to show up uh to the building and it's you know honestly it's the best case scenario if you will because I am getting a lot of downtime so as much as people like to shit on 2020 and say how trash it is and how terrible it is outside of the life lost outside of you know people really being um stressed about whether or not they have a job or you know what I mean outside of like that emotional and mental strain I honestly have to really look at the year as a lot of things like from it's been a blessing for me just in terms of my mental health, not having to be at my job as much as I was like not having to be at my job every day has absolutely made me just happier. I low key hate my job and I don't want to go in every day, but I have to. It's great money. It's not like the shit is like rocket science hard, but there's so many aspects to it that make me disgustingly miserable. And not having to go in every day makes it like I'm able to, I feel like, create more freely because I have a lot more free time. <coughs> I'm able to, um, you know, just spend time in my home. I love my apartment. You know so what? Me, Maybe yeah, too. I think sometimes like about the job situation, like about the job situation, I think sometimes it was, maybe you might be transitioning 
Like, okay, it served you for the point that it did serve you at the time. I never and liked maybe, my job. Yeah. You never liked oh, it? No. All right. No. Never so maybe it. this is, or maybe this is, I mean, I know you got your, all your merch and stuff. Like maybe this is a time that you're going to be able to just transition and do and, something and else. And that's why I absolutely think 2020 has been it a blessing for, the time for me. That it was and it's been a blessing for me because it's giving me, it's given me this space and opportunity to really just pour into avenues. my passion as opposed to my profession. So it's, you know, for me, I'm with it. And I would just offer that for as trash as it seems, for as, you know, much as we're unable to resume, I guess, uh, normal activity, if you will, I've been able to find my silver lining. That's me personal. I know that somebody that may have, you know, lost family members or may have lost a job, lost income, you know, whether or not your, your, your partner or whomever you live with, or, you know, you really had a rough time being sick, whatever it may be. Like a lot of people have had a really shit time with COVID. Personally, myself, Absolutely. I'm blessed that I didn't get sick. Anyone in my immediate circle that has gotten sick, like family members, I did have an aunt that was in the hospital. She was mm -hmm. on ventilators. She was doing really bad for a while. And she's, thank God, gotten better. You know, um, one of my old bosses passed away. Um, and so that was, you know, rough for a bunch of us that, um, you know, some of them stayed in contact and you, you don't want to see anyone, you know, hurt. Right. Or sick or anything. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to see even people that you don't know, like the majority of us don't want to see people doing poorly. They don't want us to no, sure. see or, you know, we don't wish ill on others, but I've been able to, um, get a lot of stuff done. That being said, back to your trip. Yeah, right so... Mm -hmm. What was that like? What, coming back to New York? Mm -hmm. Customs, and did they have... Um, Easy breezing. Easy breezing. It just came through. Do you have any symptoms? No. Are you feeling okay? How long were you in Mexico? You know, four or five days, and they let you in. I'm saying... Wow. It, I was no shocked. It no. Mm -mm. it was like a dreamer. It was like a dream travel. I, I was shocked. Easy, like... Easy breezy, beautiful travel girl. What were um, <laughs> what was your experience with other people? Now I know you said you stayed in the resort for the most part, but like in the airports, did you find people like wearing their masks? Were there any issues yeah. with passengers Yo, they on had the plane? The mask and the face shield thing, like they were just like they were just catering to us Americans. Like no, I mean like in the airport. Like did you find like not in terms of staff because I. Even go into the grocery store. Oh, like I've always seen. Traveling? Yes. Yes. Yeah, people were like, you know, they just sat, sat down because, yeah, they were just like respectful too. Like everybody, mm. my flight was good coming back. I, nobody was, you know, everybody just do what they told, sit down. Nobody, thank God, chose not to wear a mask and all that thing. Mm -hmm. Mumble jumble that's happening. Sometimes people don't want to wear a mask on the plane. No, it was, it was really easy breezy. Okay, good. Uh, were there so any maybe, maybe the days that you choose to return back to maybe like if you leave on a thursday come back on a tuesday that might be better because you know those are like low traveling days yeah yeah i would want to do like a, a wednesday to a wednesday in a perfect world that would be because <laughs> i feel like wednesday is the deadest day like you at work like even if you were to take friday off like if you leave a tuesday thursday morning, too. tuesday yeah. tuesday, is crazy one, tuesday one. wednesday thursday are your best days just because yeah. getting the middle of the week off is like ooh, hard, mondays hard. and fridays even though i feel it depends on what your industry is getting mondays and fridays off at my job is generally a little bit easier I mean, mm -hmm. harder than getting a Tuesday through Thursday off. So look at this. Like, I feel that, I feel Mexico was more safe than the States because, all right, so when I came back, so traveling to Milan, I don't know if you have any other questions. I feel like mm -hmm. I don't I do. know if I'm leaving anything out from traveling during COVID. I know um, some, a lot of countries were opening up and they started closing back down, like the Bahamas, et cetera. I don't know mm -hmm. if they're back open now. Um, but there are some places that, um, are still open to Americans. Cause my concern is, and this, this is what my only fear was in terms of travel is I would feel as if I can, um, not restrict or I, I feel like I could isolate myself a lot more easily at 
the airport or um, not necessarily on the plane, but like within reason, you know what I mean? Because like once you sit in a seat at the airport or once you sit someplace in the airport, for the most part, the three or four people that are around you, we're all just sitting there waiting for the plane. Like I don't feel like there's as much um, transition. Like grant now it happens, don't get me wrong. But I feel like once you sit and you just waiting for your plane and if that bitch is empty, we can spread out. Ain't no reason for us all to be sitting on top of each other. Even if I sit at a gate across the, um, the walkway from the gate that I'm leaving, I can still see when I'm boarding. So it's like you can, I feel like I'd be able to find some space where I can isolate myself. Now on the plane, not so much. You just kind of got to hope that people aren't passing you by and that everybody respects the shit and leaves their mask ah. on. Mm-hmm. But once we get to that next destination, I feel like that's where I would be more concerned where people wouldn't be wearing masks, like coming and going out and about on the streets, like walking to a restaurant or work, walking to um, doing like um, a walking tour, because I would absolutely go to Mexico City and do um, a tour of the city or I would go. That's where it gets risky. Right. And see, that's where, because I know me, I know I'm not staying inside once I get someplace else. Um, I, I wanted to go see like the Maya ruins or I, I did mm-hmm. want to go, but the travel time was very long, like two hours, two hours mm-hmm. and a half. So if you're paying for like the resort, I'm like, I'm not going to leave this beautiful place. Like, you know, if you're paying $500 a day, you're not going to want to go to see that. I want to enjoy this, this resort that I'm paying $500 worth. Bring and, me some not- my, and I'm exactly <laughs> the opposite because I would never, and that's, I think another reason why. Or- or if you would want to, then you could do like if you want to do like um if you want to if you're gonna go and you want to do seven days, you could do like two three days at the resort and then do an Airbnb or somewhere mm-hmm. else where it's not that expensive and then go out for the day and enjoy. And see, I feel like that's where knowing your travel style really comes into play. For me, I don't think. I mean, if I had it to blow, that'd be a different story. But for me, I could never rationalize spending $500 a day on a resort because I don't stay on the resort. Like, I, there's nothing here that I want to do that oh, that's going to yeah. be worth it to me. You know what I mean? Like, unless you've got, uh, again, like the private beach, unless I can do, like, I would absolutely love to do kayaking or canoeing. Like, if all of that shit was included, like, I could have a fucking mixed drink with me on this canoe or in this kayak ride, um, right. you know. Thanks. It was so huge. They had like a an adult area, then they had like a family area. There were people there with their family and their kids on that side. Um, the, um, the infinity pool was amazing, like mind blowing. I already told you how I feel about pools. Oh yeah, yeah you don't like. I'm I'm just stating for the <clears throat> for right. else. Keep going. Just, like what else was like what else was on the resort that could justify? I, I definitely had a massage. Hmm. Wow, was really good but that's not even included like you still have to pay for the massage it's not like you get a free massage so i feel like i could just go to a spa and pay for it like i don't need yeah at the time, right at the time it wasn't open it wasn't okay. open here oh but why but we i ended up like they gave me some voucher for coming like a hundred dollars and i used it okay that worked out um i want to get to you guys they had like um they have at the resort maybe like seven re- restaurants or like 10 but then like you know because of covid like probably like five were only open okay in july i don't know if things are open now um i'm trying to get in all the details for you guys um they had some restaurants that's open up you know that were open um and you could eat inside or eat outside the beach was open right the swimmer pool the infinity pool the spa did they even have golf over there I don't know if they even had a golf course, but there was definitely like, it was just, it was really amazing. And again, it's like that you getting, like you can get these luxury sweets, like the ambassador sweets, mm-hmm. like and off sweets that, you know, we really can't, like, I can't pay, can't pay 5k. And, and in my mind, I'm just like, hmm, I've been able to get all of that for like a hundred dollars a night, a hundred, less than a hundred dollars a night. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know yeah. when I was in Bermuda, Bermuda, I was hands down, Bermuda was the best resort. Now, mind you, I haven't stayed at that many resorts. I think I only did Bermuda, I did Thailand, and at, off the top, those are the only two places that I can remember that I actually did resorts. When I tell you that Bermuda Resort was 
like amazing chef kiss there were <gasps> the massage like the the spa that was and this is i stayed at grotto bay um beach and resort or grotto bay uh beach resort some shit it's grotto bay you'll find it it's like a mile from the airport like all you do is go across like a long ass bridge and it, you're right there you can see the room that i had not only was i able to see that really long bridge which was cool i was i had like an ocean view room but i could also see the airport on the other side of the water oh so wow I could watch the planes whenever i was just picking it out there and all the other kind of shit so that was fun but they had the spa on the grounds which was in a fucking cave my g like it was in a cave like you got like now mind you i got the facial which was a waste of money <laughs> his bermuda open <laughs> right huh. it was so beautiful like you get your massage in a cave like the the massage room is like a floating deck and it's like um covered in like these nice um like it's, like it's a tent it's a tent on like a floating something or other in the water oh in a God. cave there's like a really nice like seated area where you go where you kind of like check in or whatever and then you um, go back there for like your checkout experience. It was beautiful. They also had another cave system on the resort that you could just randomly walk through and explore. There was a pool, like a natural pool, like just not when I say pool, it's just like water, it's ocean in the cave, but they have it so that they, um, I think they had some lights and they had like a set of stairs that you could walk down into, but I was there by myself. So I was already afraid to just kind of go exploring in the cave. The last thing I wanted to do was like drown in there and nobody knew I was there to come see. Me. <laughs> so I didn't get in the water because of it was scary, but they had, um, I think they only, I only saw one restaurant. They had a bar. I did all, what was cool about the, the, one of the waiters, not waiters, one of the bartenders was telling me that it's an all resort. I didn't even know that all inclusive was available to me. And he was just like, yeah, I could put all this shit on your tab. Like it just, you don't have to like, let me call the guy over. And so I ended up speaking to one of the managers and he was just like, all right, so it's already in the afternoon. What I'm going to do is have everything that you've already ordered already we'll comp this for you and then just pay x y and z more and then you'll end up oh my god that's great for like the, the, um because like, mind you there's usually like a a three-day window and i only had three days left like i was already at the end of like day three it would have been and then i only had two days left so the, he set it up so that he would include everything that happened earlier so he looked out uh what else would, did they have they had the private beach so they had like two or three pools um, it, it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. But when I tell you, I know me, it was, yeah, you're not that traveler, right? You want to go out and explore. Yeah. But you know, but because of COVID it's just, you know, then it just depends on the risk that you want to take, you and know, then also then what go. all is open for you to do. If, like, no, and then, you like know, me. yeah, people may be wearing masks. People on the tour may not be wearing masks. That's not in your control. Like all the, um, people that I've seen like on Instagram because that's like my telescope to the rest of the world right really? seeing everybody that is traveling to other places I've seen two people in Tulum right now and they're just no mask having a traveling having yeah. a great time and that's and my that's fear is mm -hmm. that I end up being around somebody from whoever from wherever that ends up exposing me to it just because and so now mind you for me, I would prefer to go someplace that requires you to take a test within a certain window to get in and then take, because I think my parents are in their minds going to Aruba. And my mom was telling me about it. She's like, well, you have to take a test to get in, I think. And then you take another test when you get there. For me, that works. I want to know that everybody that I'm passing, um, at least in terms of the tourists, because the people that are native to the island, that's, you know, you would yeah. assume that there's, you know, a lower risk of catching it from there just because their number, you look at the numbers, you just got to do the math, you got to look it up. But that being said, I would prefer those restrictions put in place. And as much as I really did want to go to Tulum, I would have taken those, um, those measures on my own. Like I would have worn the mask walking around just because I don't know where everybody else is coming from. Now knowing that Tulum is just open for everybody. Right. Now, what um, kind of traveling did you do after Tulum? Because I know you also went someplace else. Yeah, I did. I ended up going to D.C. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that um, 
uh, I caught COVID in in Mexico, even though I'm not sure, but I doubt it because the people who I was with in DC, they, they didn't they didn't get COVID. In DC or in Mexico? In DC. So, so when the I people came, you were with in DC didn't yeah, get COVID I, either. They didn't get COVID. Okay. And I had and I did get COVID. So it wasn't. I don't think it happened in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Because if it was, they would have been. You know, they would have. Oh, caught but you it. said DC. That's what I mean. So the people yeah. that you were traveling with in Mexico and in DC, nobody else got no, sick. Mexico was good. It came back. Everything was good. Easy mm-hmm. breezy. Easy breezy. Beautiful travel girl. And then, um, as Trini say, I had hot feet. Hot feet. My feet was hot. Pie caliente. That I ended up going to DC. And DC. How did you get to hot. DC? DC was what clubs are open. VA hookah bars is open. Wild, wild over there. Like, and when you say, the and then DC, like. So VA. my question: How did you get to DC? I ended up getting to DC on the Amtrak. Okay, so were people like? What were the? As people were like, people were. It was cleaning up. People like they were on the Amtrak. People were mm-hmm. coming to clean up. Um, I was social distancing. Yeah, but it's still. Yeah, I was on the private car. It wasn't really packed. But you just don't know. But then once you got to DC, you said like everything was open. Were people wearing oh, masks? Oh yeah, everything or was open. The club you was can't open. wear a mask the at hookah. Yeah, some people had it. Some people didn't have it. So basically, it was the only way you knew that COVID was going on was that some people had masks on. Then. Okay, so. It, so and that's what club wasn't at forty percent. It was like thirty percent capacity, forty. But okay, yeah, still, still. Did it feel like it was at thirty percent capacity, or did it feel packed? It was packed. It was packed. But Labor Day weekend was just packed. Like <laughs> that experience. That was an experience. Like I think everybody was out. Went to a backyard. It was ram out. Oh, you were so my messy so friends. You were everywhere. <laughs> so, and you went places in New York for Labor well, Day. I was, yeah, I was just for out for Labor Day, and it was it was like COVID well. No, and you went to bars or you went to just like people. No, I, went I feel like it was to a backyard. So what happened was a that's different. So Labor Day was like West Indian Day celebration, and mm-hmm. people was out like out. There was a concert. People would perform. It was like COVID. People was out. Yeah. So I feel like that's more understandable because it's somebody's house. You, you know, you know, it's not. It was you said never. backyard stuff. Babe, it was packed. I, I'm going to show you the video. It was packed. Oh, girl, bitch, I seen the video. But I'm Why? saying like, like it's in somebody's rave, backyard. Like- but it's somebody's private residence, though. Matter. No, we but that's what my point is, is that it's a private residence. There is no regulation on a private residence versus you go to a restaurant or you go to a bar. They have to answer to food and health right. and safety like, inspectors I would, and all that shit. To, my house, COVID, I can have I as many people as I want. Backyard. Right, but that's what my point backyard, is. Right. Somebody's house, I'm expecting to have a lot of people because I know you're going to invite five people. Them five people are bringing other like people, or, people. You know what I mean? Like somebody's house, I mean, like I've already turned down mad invites for people's mm-hmm. backyard shit and stuff like that just because, my nigga, I trust you, but I don't know who all your company is. Because my question is always, who all over there? If it's just you, your wife, or it's you and your husband, or it's you and your kids there, I have no problem showing up. Because I trust the smaller, um, you know, environment of you and your home. Like, I, I, I'm okay in your home. I trust that you clean your home. So I'm going to go to your house. You know what I mean? Versus if I go to your home, and now you're having a birthday party or an event or a celebration, my concern mm-hmm. is for the people that are coming to your home mm-hmm. where are these people coming from because not only are they bringing their germs they're also bringing the germs of everybody else that they've been around yeah so yeah. it's like i am just waiting even though it's outside it's air mm-hmm. it's not inside but still but even um, outside people, people still on top of each other yeah people still on top of each other some people feel that you know if i'm gonna catch covid i'm gonna catch it off the block or if i'm gonna catch it if i go away then i'll catch it there some people mm-hmm. like if i'm gonna catch it i'm gonna catch it you know, some people have different mixed views, but some people are more protective. But um, I would like, so I had COVID and my mom had COVID. What um, was that like for you guys? So I had, like, I couldn't smell, I couldn't taste, but I didn't feel as sick 
but perhaps it's because the pri- um, prior three months, it would come and go. Like there was days that I didn't feel good, but I'm like, okay, I'm still good. Uh, I just couldn't, um, like, um, I had like the runs, mm-hmm. I had the runs, had diarrhea, couldn't taste, couldn't smell, um, headaches on and off, but I was still good. Like I was still good. Yeah, you were good um, spirits. It's just your body was a little, ugh, this sucks. Yeah, 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 like a cold. Mm-hmm. Um, but my mom was, she was, she wasn't feeling good. She had like fever one day Then she said her body really hurts coughing. Well, um, we did like, um, Dr. Sabi's diet, um, with, um, high alkaline foods mm-hmm. and eating lots of like avocado, pineapples. I was making fish soup, a lot of like healthy home remedies. And that really helped. But actually like at the moment I'm like, ah, we may have COVID, like we're sick. The, as the end of the world like I was freaking out like because ah! you don't know where it's gonna go you get sick right. and then it's just like how bad is it gonna get and yeah how bad but thank god we were like oh, we were on top manageable of, yes yeah, since March we've been eating healthy eating clean um drinking our teas like everything ginger onion anything that you could think of we're doing it honey everything lemon bringing up our immune system up just to give it that um best fight to fight off the, the virus and now I'm just like, thank God that we did get it. Or mommy, my mom did get it because um, if the second wave does hit New York, as they think that it is going to hit, um, she doesn't have to be there. She can go back um, to DR. I'm Dominican. She can go back to DR, go over there, be quarantined over there, and not have to do the quarantining in New York. So, but why would she go? Well, who doesn't? Well, what's well, because, you know, well, 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 my are mom. Are the numbers lower there? It's just very more comfortable because here we're cooped up in the apartments and in DR you have space. It's very different from, okay, I'm cooped up, but I have my own yard. You know, Mm -hmm. I have space. I have a Mm -hmm. mango tree. Very much better ambiance than being cooped up in the concrete jungle. And do you have more family over there than here? Yeah, we have more family. And as well, it's just... It's it's a change of scenery. You've already been in the house for the fucking year. We've been in the house since March. Are you kidding me? And, you know, people do things for you. Even though you have Instacart, they come do it. But over there, like, everything is getting done for you. Literally. Really? Yes, girl. We're we're rich over there. <laughs> like, we're wild, like, <laughs> Breakfast is done in the morning. Like, you you know, like, wow, how can I be so... Breakfast is done in the morning. Y'all, but, why are y'all here crazy. anyway? Why are we here anyway? That's why I just told my mom. I'm like, okay, mom, if the second wave is hitting, like, definitely getting... To hell with the wave. Point. I don't gotta yeah. cook. That's all I, I know. needed to you hear. Don't have Fuck to cook that. Me, none of that. So imagine how life would be like you wake up, breakfast is done for you. Go you now. Go. I know. Shit. <laughs> Pick up and bring and that you ass to the you, know, you, you said the right magic work, word. Brain cells are going right to work. You don't gotta worry about, you know, whatever, none of that. Like, oh, you have the, the sun, you don't gotta do no breakfast. How Everything far are you from the done. beach? Babe, everything is possible in the DR. How far are y'all from the beach? Not too far, not too far. Is it like walking or do you have to drive? Well, we have a driver. I was just going to say, I bet you. Yeah, I was gonna, it's it's different life driver. over there, but we have a driver. Like they drive you, drive us wherever we want to go. Why are you here? I know, I know. Why That's, are you here? That light went out on that side. Well, I, I've been remote. Thing, you know, I've been like doing remote teaching. Yep, yeah, we'll talk about that, bro. Sure. Y- yeah, because I'm like, you could do that from there. It's remote, bro. Like, remote that ass from DR. You walling. I absolutely wouldn't be here. Said the magic word. Somebody is cooking for me. I don't cook. I don't clean. I barely cook and clean here. Yep. Now there's actually someone doing it. Okay, so, so like organic because it's amazing. But yeah, it that, works. I was actually talking with my mom about that. Like, okay, maybe October next month. I, I absolutely think that you have to go. I think y'all are ridiculous yeah. for not going, but yeah, I can't yeah. believe it. And FYI, everyone, New Yorkers had it really tough here. Like, well, that's why everyone is even moving out of the, the city unless you had a place in the Hamptons or say like New Yorkers definitely had it tough here being quarantined. It was not fun. Yeah, I haven't even, I stopped looking at the, um, I stopped looking at the numbers. I stopped checking in for how, all I did see. I was at my parents' house. I think it was yesterday or Monday. And I think that it was the day prior. There were already 300 and something thousand new reported cases in one day. 300 and something 
thousand new case in one day. So it's like the shit's not going anywhere. That's not and like you had mentioned. It was when you get it, not knowing what it's going to look like for you. That's my fear because yeah. I absolutely know that I feel like if I were to get sick, I'd be fine. I'd be miserable for a few days, but okay, you get over it, right? But yeah. my fear is about it. But I'm I was thinking more about it than you were in the beginning. I'm like, y'all, uh, COVID is here. Like, we were, you was like, oh, it's like the flu. I'm like, no, people are dying from it. But I, I think that. just take care of your health. Like, just start prepping now. Get the elderberry. I have that on Zach. I have ginger. Like, it's like you just have to be on it. As long as you're taking care of your immune. So if you do get it, because they say everyone's going to get it. I just bought some vitamin C yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually do and it is uh um package like I am just on it or like I have got some I got some fish I'm gonna be eating fish so I constantly stay on my immune system to make sure that I am eating healthy eating clean and I'm getting all my vitamins and everything up that's just the best that you can do yes I agree um I can and especially considering um regular flu system, regular flu season is on its way. I, um, I could use, I could stand to get better at taking care of myself. Um, because my fear is that, cause I know my dad would never let me just be sick by myself. My dad would absolutely come over and make sure that I'm eating, make sure my dog is eating and making sure like everything gets taken care of and that like, I'm not living in squalor. My mom would also pop in if I needed something. You know what I mean? Like she would come. Are you eating? Do you need soup? I'm on my way. So I know that my parents would do that and I would be fearful that I would get them sick. And as... Or leave it in front of your door. They hmm? could leave a bag in front of your door. They ain't leaving shit in front of the door. They're coming in. They're coming. No, they can't come in though. Like if you're feeling really See, sick. that's the thing. Like I don't... I, I do not trust my parents to just leave it at the door. That's yeah, not... Yeah, they leave it at the door. That's not happening. So they would absolutely be, especially my dad, he would absolutely be the one to be like, okay, yeah, I got the key. I'll be there in 20 minutes. And my dad is also the one that's always between the um, two of us, like, all right, grandma needs these groceries or all right, so we pick this up and drop it off. My other grandma, she needs this. Okay, drop this off. So it's, I know for me personally, I'm just um, around people that are older and I was telling you earlier, one of my cousins has cancer and she's going through chemo right now. And my grandma is the one that is helping her with a lot of things. So even if my grandma were able to recoup from getting sick, I would fear that she would get my cousin sick. And she doesn't have a fucking immune system because that's the point in fucking chemo. Yeah, if you go away, you have to quarantine. You wouldn't be able to see them, honestly, until you get tested and it's the negative. Right. And that is just not, it's not a viable option for me. That whole um, two-week window is just uh, very long when somebody says, oh, can you do, you know what I mean? It's like, I, it's, you can just say, no, I can't because of this. And my family's understanding. I'm, they're not total, they're not idiots, you know? But it's for me, I know that the longer I put off doing X, Y, and Z for someone that I care about, the worse I feel. So I think that knowing myself as well as I do, it's made this um so much easier for me to just be able to say it ain't for me to fuck with it's just not yeah my personality isn't isn't built for this but after you came back after you said you felt a lot safer in mexico than you did in dc is it because you stayed in the room or is it because went out and even because they have like this strip in Cancun that people go out to and I walked by it or like we went to go see and people still had their mask in Cancun and, yeah in Cancun okay. and in the States it was just and in wild. DC no masks everybody's just out bare face yeah yeah so turn yeah that that doesn't that doesn't work for me so overall your travel experiences have varied to different degrees from feeling extra safe to feeling un well, I don't know if you would say did you feel unsafe or did you just feel I didn't feel unsafe. I I, I didn't feel unsafe, but I was just like, ah, right, this is wild. Nobody got no mask on. We all you know, like 
we outside, but I don't know if Amer I don't know. I don't know if Americans really kind of care. I think a lot of us take uh the luxury uh well not even the luxury because not even all of us have health care. So uh, I, I those are the younger, we just like because again, Labor Day and even when COVID started in Florida, like they were like, whatever, we partying, spring break is happening. Right. But then I think a lot of that also had to do with their government. Like they opened the beaches up. Like they gave them that kind of green light to go ahead and do what the fuck they wanted to do. I think that a lot of that has with between Cuomo and um the Blasio, um, I think they're totally dropping the ball with the whole school situation. And that's another conversation to be had. But I think that there were a lot of restrictions put in place on the movement of New Yorkers in terms of, um, you know, business, nothing's open. There's nothing outside really for you to do. And between that and, you know, I don't know what happened in other states. I don't know what type of communication was had. I don't know what kind of, I only live here. I'm not going anywhere else. So my primary concern was, of course, where I'm at. And um, feel how you want to feel about uh, the, elect the elected officials here. I'm pleased with the way that they handle COVID here. It just mm -hmm. hasn't, I haven't felt that same care put federally. And that's another reason why there's kind of been a damper in even my desire to travel around the country because I am absolutely ready to take a road trip. I had a wrench thrown in my plans um, due to, cause I was gonna go with someone and they basically flaked on me um, mm -hmm. and fucked up that whole plan. Um, mm -hmm. And I hope you're listening and I hope that you hear that you fucked up the plan, but neither here nor there. Um, I was looking to go to Vermont and huh, their website was wild confusing in terms of who needed to quarantine, who didn't need to quarantine. And the last thing I want is for someone to take my fucking money. And then when I get there, they tell me, oh, you have to do X, Y, and Z. Because I told you I'm not staying inside. Once I get someplace, I got to be, I want to do things. Now, granted, the stuff that I like to do is all outdoor shit. I want to go for a hike. I want to go for a kayak uh, ride. I, I want to, you know, go boating and swimming and stuff like that. But there were just so many different pieces of information regarding who needs to quarantine, who doesn't, that after a while, I just was like, well, fuck it. I don't feel like going. Because if I pay this, because I, I don't trust the hotel or the Airbnb host to say, yes, we'll take your money. And then when I get there and try to check in, then they try to tell me some shit like, oh, you have to quarantine for 14 days. Bitch, I'm only booked for four. Well, mm -hmm. how am I quarantining? You know what I mean? And now all of a sudden you've given me issues. I don't have the, the mental patient. I don't have the patience for that. I'm not that person. So I kind of just didn't really look into that. But there are a lot of other states that are coming off of that list. So now in my mind, I'm like, damn, I could really go to, um, I think Arizona came off of the restriction list to uh, New York. So I'm like, shit, I could go out there and really do um, page like I really wanted to do. I can do, um, what is that, like Red Canyon or something. Like there's a lot of stuff. There are beautiful national parks in this country. However, oh, it's a matter of, am, I'm going to be in the fucking airport. And that is, uh, you know what I mean? Like I can't do the road trip all the way out west, but I can absolutely do like a quick little ditty in another, in another state someplace. But then it's a matter of, am I only going someplace I can drive or am I willing to take that risk on a plane? And that's where I personally haven't made up my just, mind. So talking to people that have traveled, I'm feeling a little bit better, especially considering how empty the airports are. Because honestly, as long as you keep your mask on and you wash your hands and you're not moving too far, you're not moving anywhere. I mean, it's going to be hard to stay in one spot for like six hours going to L.A. or, you know, even eight hours or so. Wherever you're going in the state, I feel like the longest you're going to be on a plane is like six or eight hours, depending on the, what do you call it, the taxiing and, you know, the waiting to get off and the waiting to take off. That being said, that's a long time to kind of sit in one spot with your mask on. So I don't know. I have to. Um, yeah, you have to debate it. Yeah. I guess everyone just has mixed feelings and depends on how they feel, what they feel comfortable with. Some people feel comfortable with um, going on a plane, going to the airport, and they just may want to drive. 
you know, rent a car with your friends, y'all yeah, just drive or whatever that may look like. Um, but I do feel that, you know, these have been very testing times. Mm-hmm. Travelers that um, we use travel to cope with life. Yeah. <laughs> You know, whatever that travel may be of, you know, going to a different state, just going away for the weekend, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Scenery, whatever it is for you. As you use um travel just to cope with life, it's been really difficult because now, we, you know, that's been limited. Um, But definitely just work on your mental and maybe you can do something, you know, okay, we can travel somewhere else. Maybe you can go to a different state. I mean, a different city, get an Airbnb. If you're in New York, maybe a different borough. And just maybe you could feel like you're going away if you're going to like Queens for one night. I don't know, something. Mm -hmm. I definitely, for my travelers that's been hurt, I can cope with you. I feel I I was hurt. That's why I laughed. (laughs) I think after talking to you about your airport experience, I would feel more comfortable flying someplace. It's just the destination. Because seeing what was going on in D.C., that's my fear going to another state. Like, even if I were to go to Wyoming or like, I've always wanted to go to fucking Oregon. So, all right, fuck it. I got the time. Let's go to Oregon if it's not on the list or whatever. But once I get there, because that was another thing that kind of helped me back from doing Vermont, because instead of just going with my friend, I was, I was planning on going by myself for the longest, but then they kept talking it up like they wanted to go. And I'm like, all right, cool. Come with me. It'll be great to have somebody to go up there with. But that being said, when I looked at all the different spots that I wanted to go, everything's closed. Like, there's nothing that is open. And it's reasonable. I mean, I get it. But I would have felt that, you know, with different things opening here in New York, that certain things would have reopened in other states, especially in the Northeast, with the numbers being a little bit lower than they are in other areas. I was expecting that even if I would have had to make an appointment to go to um, a museum or an appointment to see a historical um, foundation or something like that, I could have dealt with that. However, they're just not open and those aren't options. So it was a matter of, I know that I can't just go someplace and stay on the resort. So I ended up, that was another reason why I was contemplating changing the destination. Because if I'm going to go someplace, like I would rather go to say like the Poconos or Lake George or someplace up north and stay there. Where if I had a private pool or if I had lake access and I had boats, and I had like a grill, like that's something that I can do that's, yeah. three days of just being inside because you're giving me all the stuff that there is to do. Like, but at the same time, it's just like, I only see myself spending like $200 a day to, you know what I mean? Max. And that's because I could drive there. Whereas if I had to pay for my flight and then spend $500 a day to just stay in one spot, it don't sit but right with me. Sweet that I had, that's just because of the suite I had. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There probably is definitely other better deals. Oh, especially in Mexico. I fuck yeah, there's going to be. Mexico is so cheap, but, you know, we could discuss about that. We, 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 you know, we could hit up the nice. Yeah. Oh. We ain't saying, uh, we're staying with the D. We're staying with D. Fuck that. If I can't get out of here and I go to Mexico, we scoot over. over. Scoot over. Yeah. The deals are. Um, yeah. But yeah. So any of the tips that you have for, um, you know, travelers that are yeah. COVID um, travelers, that is. Well, you said, um, any other tra- tips for, for COVID travelers in particular, for those of us that are ready to travel again? Cause I feel like I'm this close to going, especially knowing that the airports aren't as, uh, as rammed sticky. out. I feel yeah. as long as you take your, if you do feel that you are ready to travel, as long as you have your mask, get the face shield, um, shoe, if you want extra protective, put the suit on, um, I feel like you should be good if you're doing those things. Have your hand sanitizer, your alcohol, because life is still going. Mm-hmm. Life is still continuing. So if you, you know, if you just take the protective measures, you should be good. I, um, I think that one piece of and work on your immune, and work on your immune system. Get it up. If you feel that, you know, maybe you have some underlying health problems and maybe you want to sit it out, that's okay. But if you're healthy and just definitely work on your immune system. I think one thing to keep in mind also that came up in 
comparing what was going on in my mind and then actually having you say it out loud was go someplace where you'll be comfortable with what their measurements in place are. We've already established that Mexico is probably not someplace that I would feel comfortable going because they're not screening people for COVID to get in. Mm -hmm. I would feel more comfortable going someplace where either one, I know where, or I can see what their numbers are based on CDC or whatever. Like in the United States, there's like, you can go to that state's website. You can go to the tourism board and Mm -hmm. um, you could also just go to the CDC and see what, now mind you, you can always also have your feelings for how everything is being reported because that's another question oh, and yeah. conversation in and of itself. Are these agencies reporting the numbers accurately? Are they taking this test accurately? Like there's a lot to it that we just can't, we don't have control and, over. Good point. Yeah. And it's like you, so you only have control yourself and how you you yeah. can only control, and that's been before this, it's going to be during this, and it's going to be after this. You can never control anything other than yourself, but you can also make sure that you educate yourself as much as possible with as much information from as many trusted resources as possible. Don't just go to the, uh, the hotel's website to see what, you know, numbers in the area are. You want to go to some place that's independent of the people that are going to be collecting your fucking money. But knowing yeah. my personality type, I know that I'm not going to feel comfortable leaving the room if I can't ensure that the people around me in the outside space are, um, that I've got some type of protections that the people that I'm sharing this, uh, resort or this, um, you know, uh, tour space is, uh, are protecting themselves as way as well. So like you said, like I could wear a mask, but like on the train, not everybody has a mask. So that being said, it's kind of like, all right, well, I know that I don't know. I'll Mm -hmm. yeah. Just even driving around. I see people not wearing masks outside and that's, I'm a little more comfortable with that because it's outside and you're a little bit easier. You're a little bit, um, more able to distance yourself from other people and then the chances of somebody next to you just like talking it it just it's it don't bother me as much and also outside I'm less concerned with other people wearing masks because I know I'm gonna have mine on if I'm near you so the whole being outside and then the me having my mask on makes me feel more comfortable on Mm -hmm. I I saw no I see it every day I had two masks on. Like, okay, At my like, job, I see it every day. I, too, was that person that had two masks on. And certain <laughs> depends on where I'm working because I have the public in my fucking face. I have all of these stranger motherfuckers in my face. So, like I said, I don't take this shit. I don't take it lightly. Like, I'm around my grandma. And I take, listen, it would absolutely destroy me if I felt like I was the person that got my grandma sick, my cousin sick any of my aunties, my dad, like if I felt like it was me, I'd lose my shit. And I know I don't want to deal with that. So I put things in place or I'm, and I'm certain to, like I said, we can only control ourselves. So I control myself accordingly so that I can not live with that guilt should it happen. Um, but absolutely know what your traveling patterns are. If you know you can't sit still when you get someplace, if you're a me, if you want to be outside and in the streets, then you might want to go someplace where they're testing people to get in to the country or into the relative space that you'll be in. Um, Now, granted, none of that is 100% either. You just have another barrier in place. It's just more than likely a little bit safer than someplace that is just letting people show up, smoke, cook, eat, drink, and party and have a good time without any precautions in place to keep you safe. So that's what I think. Absolutely do some research and look into what um is in place Got anything else low that's it i have to go homeschool now y'all and yeah, have fun with that shit better you than me I, bro. that I, is I'm, another thing that i'm for four days in july <laughs> let me go homeschool to the um let me go home thank you so much for having me uh, thank you I, for joining me you um, heard maybe some questions that some people have been having oh i think so absolutely Hope we covered it. And if you guys have any questions, just feel free to. Yeah, where can the people find you? Oh, yeah, you guys can find me at my Instagram at la underscore reina nyc. 
It'll be in the show notes for y'all that can't spell. It's L A underscore R E I N A N Y C. Dana N Y C. If you have any questions, um, ask Dana on in the YouTube, and we can feel free to answer. I appreciate y'all. Stay safe, and thank you for having me. Bye, baby. I'll talk to you later. We'll speak soon. Bye, baby. Okay. Hello. So, um. Uh, what was the ending oh so if you like this episode of travel and shit or if you've liked any of the prior episodes that we've had um be sure to uh or if you just want to support the show if you just want to support me if you want to support travel and shit podcast this is one of my beautiful hoodies that's up for the sizzle um shout out to y'all that already copped it quite a few of you guys bought it already and i'm very excited for us to be twinsies but um head over to um travel and shit podcast podcast.com go to shop and you can purchase um, merch and the such um, also if you want to support me i'd appreciate you taking the free route and subscribing to the podcast on whatever platform that you listen to your podcast and um, leave a rating it absolutely makes the show visible to other people and it um, helps me get the message out there to other travelers and people that have a desire to listen to travel related conversations um, I also have a listener survey on travelandshippodcast.com. That is actually right on the homepage. So as soon as you get there, it's the first thing you're going to see when you scroll down. I'd appreciate you taking that survey so that I get a better feel for who you guys are and what you want from the show. So that is all. I thank you all for listening. Welcome, welcome, welcome to those of you that are new. And don't forget, travel is more than vacation. Bye, guys. Bye, YouTube.